China has once again shaken the world by introducing the AE-200, a groundbreaking flying transport vehicle aimed to challenge and eventually replace traditional automobiles. But what exactly is the AE-200? How does this machine operate, and could it genuinely transform our daily routines? In today's video, we will explore this groundbreaking aerial vehicle and similar innovations worldwide, taking an in-depth look at what transportation will become in the future. At the core of China's latest transportation leap stands the AE-200, conceived and built by Wu Chong Kong Technology in Chengdu. Picture an aircraft that lifts off vertically, no runway required, then morphs into a sleek airplane, zipping across the skyline at up to 320 kilometers per hour. In many ways, it's a marriage of helicopter agility with airplane endurance. Despite its light aircraft classification, the AE-200 can haul up to 2,500 kilograms. In megacities like Beijing or Shanghai, where bumper-to-bumper -bumper congestion can stretch for miles, a 200-kilometer journey that once took hours could shrink to mere minutes. Climbing to 1,000 meters above ground enables it to avoid skyscrapers, power lines, and other obstacles. And with a 200-kilometer range on a single charge or fuel load, it could shuttle passengers from city centers to suburbs or regional hubs without the need for sprawling air rail networks or landing strips. What truly sets this craft apart is its multi-role design. It's envisioned not only as a commuter shuttle, but also as an airborne ambulance and a compact cargo carrier. Imagine paramedics deploying AE-200 units to accident sites, soaring above snarled roads, arriving faster than any ground ambulance, and delivering critical care en route to the hospital. In June 2024, the AE-200 underwent public test flights showcasing full load performance and seamless hover-to-cruise transitions. Those flights weren't mere press stunts. They signaled that commercialization might be closer than people realize. Yet challenges loom large. Regulatory agencies worldwide still treat helicopters and airplanes separately. Integrating a hybrid VTOL into daily life demands new air traffic corridors, pilot certifications that cover both rotary and fixed-wing operations, and noise regulations calibrated for buzzing rotors in densely packed neighborhoods. Public acceptance is another hurdle. Will individuals trust a flying taxi to whisk them over downtown traffic? Without widespread vertiports, rooftop landing pads equipped with fast chargers and maintenance bays, the AE-200 could remain grounded. But if Wuchong Kong, regulators and city planners align, this craft could catalyze a true shift, replacing congested boulevards with 3D highways. Flying vehicles have traditionally split into two camps. Helicopters, which take off and land vertically but guzzle fuel in forward flight, and airplanes, which cruise efficiently yet require runways. The AE-200 attempts to fuse the best of both. Its rotors allow zero runway takeoffs, no need for sprawling airports, while its fixed wings and streamlined fuselage handle forward aerodynamics, slashing energy consumption compared to traditional helicopters. Accomplishing this blend is no small task. Transitioning between hover and cruise modes demands precise rotor tilt and rapid shifts in lift distribution. Onboard computers must juggle dozens of sensors, speed, altitude, wind speed, rotor RPMs, to manage that changeover without stalling or jarring passengers. Think of shifting a car's transmission under high torque, but at 200 kilometers per hour in three dimensions. Avionics form the AE-200's digital backbone. Autonomous navigation systems, obstacle detection LIDAR, and real-time traffic coordination modules allow it to merge into airspace already peppered with drones, helicopters, and light aircraft. Redundant power sources, from dual battery packs to backup hydraulics, ensure that a single component failure doesn't doom the entire flight. In one safety trial, engineers deliberately shut down one rotor pack during hover. The backup system maintains stability long enough to glide to an emergency landing pad. Passenger cabins, meanwhile, are built with crashworthiness in mind. Energy-absorbing seats, reinforced floors, and an emergency parachute system capable of lowering the whole vehicle if every other option fails. Yet the real question isn't whether this hybrid tech can function. Engineers already proved that in 2024. The question is whether it can scale safely and sustainably for daily commutes. You can build a flying car in a hangar, but can regulators keep pace? Airspace governance grew around conventional aircraft, airports, control towers, flight corridors. 
Now imagine layering hundreds of AE200s weaving between skyscrapers at 200 kilometers per hour. We need vertiports, rooftop pads on office towers, hospitals, and hotels, each requiring structural reinforcement, fire suppression systems, and dedicated air traffic control monitors. These vertiports must track incoming and outgoing flights, coordinate schedules, and manage charging cycles, all without grounding the AE-200 every time a thunderstorm rolls in. Pilot licensing is another knot. A helicopter pilot isn't automatically qualified to handle this hybrid VTOL. They need fresh training on the nuances of transitioning from rotary wing hover to wingborne cruise. Similarly, airplane pilots must learn how to handle vertical departures and low-altitude maneuvers. Certification standards must merge with existing aviation rules, which historically treated rotorcraft and fixed-wing aircraft as mutually exclusive categories. China and the United Arab Emirates have already begun drafting low-altitude corridors and certifying VTOL prototypes. In the United States, the FAA's Urban Air Mobility Roadmap maps routes for taxi-like tolls at altitudes up to 1,000 feet above city centers. But turning those roadmaps into operational reality can take years, if not decades. Meanwhile, public perception hangs in the balance. Would you shell out $200 per ride for a sky taxi when a self-driving electric car costs $20? Until battery densities double and recharge times drop below 15 minutes, AE 200 energy costs remain prohibitive. Vertiports must become as common as gas stations, dotted across business districts and residential blocks. Otherwise, you could have 10 AE 200s parked on a single rooftop, all waiting hours for a charging slot, defeating the point. Regulatory bodies, city planners, and private firms will need to collaborate early, aligning building codes, airspace maps, and electric grid upgrades. Only then can flying vehicles transcend prototypes and become everyday transport. If the AE 200 steals the spotlight for commuter fantasies, Haitian Medical Technologies Rescue drone might write the next chapter in life-saving logistics. Picture a UAV that isn't just a delivery quadcopter. It's a fully equipped airborne ICU. On board, it carries a portable ventilator for pump, defibrillator, and an advanced multi-parameter monitor. Real-time video feeds link paramedics in the field to ER doctors miles away, allowing remote specialists to direct interventions on the fly. More impressive is its resilience. Rated to operate in temperatures from minus 25 degrees Celsius to plus 46 degrees Celsius and climb to 5,000 meters altitude, this drone can venture into mountainous provinces where avalanches bury roads or floodwaters wash away highways. With a 300 kilogram payload capacity, it can lift an injured hiker to a nearby field hospital or drop life-saving meds to survivors trapped in earthquake rubble. China's regulators are already drafting medical air lanes around major cities, carving out paths that let these drones bypass commercial traffic. But integrating them into everyday EMS workflows, dispatch algorithms that decide between sending an ambulance or a drone, remains a work in progress. Once that happens, though, a flying paramedic could become as commonplace as an ambulance siren, transforming emergency care in remote and urban areas alike. While multi-passenger tolls and medical drones grab headlines, Poland's Volonaut airbike sets its sights on personal freedom. Engineered by Thomas Patton, this single-seat flying motorcycle looks straight out of a sci-fi blockbuster. Instead of a giant rotor, it relies on two duct jet engines pointing downward. This design eliminates exposed blades, boosting safety in crowded urban canyons. At top speed, around 200 kilometers per hour, the airbike slices through dense cityscapes, weaving between lampposts and bridges that would ground larger helicopters. The pilot sits astride the aircraft with a 360-degree field of view, no cockpit glass to obstruct vision. Onboard stabilization computers handle the fine balancing act, smoothing out sudden weight shifts and gusty crosswinds. Carbon fiber, 3D printed parts keep the frame ultralight, seven times lighter than a typical motorcycle. At its current prototype stage, pricing and release dates remain secrets. But enthusiasts envision a future where airbikes roam sidewalks like electric scooters today, filling a niche between a hoverboard and a personal helicopter. However, flying motorcycles don't fit neatly into existing regulatory boxes. In most countries, airspace rules for personal jets are still undefined. 
Still, the Volonaut airbike embodies a broader shift toward democratizing flight, transforming personal aerial transport from luxury to possibility. Could these nimble machines replace cars on urban streets? If regulatory frameworks catch up and public demand stays strong, we might see airbike lanes alongside bike lanes within the next decade. Across the Pacific, ALF Aeronautics has taken a different approach, a true hybrid road air vehicle that already holds FAA approval for US airspace. Picture a two-seater sports coupe that drives like a souped-up Tesla, accelerating zero to 100 kilometers per hour in under six seconds. Then, with one button press, transforms into a flying machine. In car mode, it cruises 322 kilometers on a single charge. Reach the nearest vertiport, fold out the wings, switch to flight mode, and you're airborne. In the air, it maxes out around 110 kilometers before needing to recharge. A built-in airframe parachute can lower the entire vehicle gently if both engines fail, giving pilots a vital safety net. Thousands have already placed pre-orders at around $300,000 apiece, signaling robust market interest. For now, it's positioned as a premium product, an early adopter trophy. But if ALF holds costs steady and battery tech improves, we could see lower cost variants within a few years, much like how early electric cars devolved from clunky raisin bright Teslas into mass market EVs. Beyond personal transport, ALF envisions emergency response roles, airborne ambulances zipping over gridlock and last mile delivery, with small cargo pods attached to the same chassis. Their regulatory success in the US might smooth pathways for other innovators. But battery range remains a hurdle. At 110 kilometers, the flight range limits trips to intracity hops. Without a dense network of vertiports equipped with gigafast chargers, capable of recharging 80% capacity in under 30 minutes, these flying cars will remain niche. Still, ALF's achievements offer proof that hybrid air road vehicles can graduate from prototypes to operational services. If they scale production and batteries hit 400 to 500 watt-hour per kilogram in energy density, 300 kilometer flight ranges could become a reality. That would position ALF's successor as an urban lifeline rather than a weekend toy. The AE200, Volonaut and ALF are just four threads in a vast tapestry of airborne innovation. Around the world, engineers are racing to turn personal flight from science fiction into daily reality. In France, Zapata's Esfli crafts hoverboards, two carbon fiber arms tipped with propellers that let riders ascend to 3,000 meters and cruise at 130 kilometers per hour. With simple handle controls, the Esfli makes hoverboard flight accessible to beginners. Fire departments see potential for dropping gear onto wildfires, while adventure seekers dream of panoramic flights above the Mediterranean. Japan's SkyDrive works on the SD-03, a single-seat electric VTOL tailored for narrow cityscapes. This compact frame allows takeoffs and landings on skyscraper rooftops. With a fully electric powertrain, it emits zero tailpipe pollutants, a boon for environmentally conscious megacities. Tokyo's gridlock crisis could ease if every office building boasted its own microvertiport, enabling commuters to soar above traffic snarls. New Zealand's Martin Aircraft Company continues refining its Martin Jetpack, a gasoline-powered backpack that can lift a pilot to 2,500 meters and cruise at 74 kilometers per hour for 30 minutes. Though funding setbacks have slowed its journey, each test flight reaffirms the viability of jetpack flight. Today, early customers use it for offshore oil rig evacuations. Tomorrow, hikers might strap on a jetpack to scale remote peaks without trails. In the United States, Inventor Hunter Cowell has built a hoverboard drone with eight carbon fiber propellers capable of lifting a rider 150 meters high for 20 minutes. With redundancy for motor failures woven through the design, Cowell aims to set a new safety standard. If the FAA grants flight permits over suburban neighborhoods, these hoverboards could spark a new wave of air miles, the way e-scooters transformed pedestrian streets. Even Tesla and Toyota have hinted at interest funding research in battery technology and AI-driven flight controls. The convergence of AI, advanced materials, and energy storage is compressing decades of R&D into mere years. Yet, no single design has emerged as an undisputed champion. The field remains a patchwork of competing philosophies, electric rotors versus jets, single-seat craft versus multi-passenger air taxis, 
gasoline power plants versus hydrogen fuel cells. For all the promise of flying vehicles, massive hurdles still block everyday use. Today's lithium-ion batteries, at about 300 watt-hour per kilogram, must leap to 500 watt-hour per kilogram, or fuel cell equivalents, to let a four-passenger VTOL cruise for two hours without lugging a 100 kilograms battery pack. Even then, recharging 80% in under 10 minutes demands power infrastructure akin to a mini data center rather than a simple gas station charger. Safety and redundancy pose another challenge. On roads, accidents are two-dimensional. In the sky, the tolls must dodge birds, drones, and sudden gusts. Autopilot and collision avoidance systems, LIDAR, radar, computer vision can't eliminate every risk. Adding redundant motors, backup batteries, and ballistic parachutes helps, but every extra layer adds weight and saps range. Imagine hundreds of tolls buzzing over a city. Human controllers can't manage that volume, so we need AI-driven urban traffic management, UTM, systems, 3D grids where each craft broadcasts GPS, speed, flight plan, and sensor data in real time. But without a universal sky ID protocol, Madeir conflicts remain a constant threat. Regulations also lag. Most countries still separate drones from aircraft. Licensing must expand to cover novice EVTOL pilots, and insurers need reliable flight logs before setting reasonable premiums. Otherwise costs skyrocket. Despite these formidable challenges, the momentum that drives flying vehicles remains undeniable. As battery technology advances, AI traffic systems mature, and policies evolve, each successful prototype brings us closer to routine skyward commutes. The journey won't be easy, but the future of three-dimensional mobility is unfolding, promising a world where traffic jams may become a relic of the past.